bounds. Astronomers and scientists are excited and baffled at the same time by a newly found celestial event happening in the northern skies. Tom Sater is here to explain. Ooh, look, it's so beautiful oh, behind you. Yeah, this is a great story. I mean, how many times we have events in our life that science can't explain what's going on? And that's exactly what has been, uh, been talked about, discovered in the last year. Let's explain. It could be in the family of the auroras. We've all seen the beautiful ribbons of green that dance across the skies, the northern lights, the southern lights, this picture taken from the International Space Station. And most of the time, we see the hues of green, sometimes hues of purples or blues. It's rare to see red, but that happens. This could be in the family, but we're not exactly sure. So let's explain why the auroras occur. First of all, surface of the sun, solar flare. Sun, the radiation, and solar winds toward the Earth. Earth's magnetic field takes the electrons and guides them toward the poles. And when those electrons collide with our atmosphere, we have the, the, the lights, the auroras. We see them in the north, the aurora borealis, the northern lights. We have them in the south, the aurora australis, and the southern lights. But a group of aurora chasers in Alberta, Canada, started noticing this. What in the world is this? They got together on Facebook, started the Alberta Aurora Chasers to share their information. But to the naked eye, it looks like a thin, wispy little streak. They all thought it was maybe a, a plane's contrail. Millions of people may have seen this, but they dialed back the shutters on their cameras and saw an illumination column that was vibrant. And so they reached out to a scientific community. What could this be? getting better technology, using a family of satellites, they came up with some ideas of what this is. And here's what they do know. It's ionized gas moving at five to six kilometers per second, extremely fast. It's a narrow channel that moves east to west, thousands of kilometers in length, but get this, it's 6,000 degrees Celsius. That is as hot as the inner core of the Earth. And that's what makes this difference to the aurora. The aurora is not this hot. It likely, it likely occurs maybe three times per month. So they started taking more pictures. And it's really interesting to note that since they don't know why it happens, since they don't know what it is, and, it, and really they don't know why it's that hot, they didn't know what to call it, and they came up with the scientific name Steve. It, it, long story, but it comes after the animation movie uh, Over the Hedge. Uh, they didn't, uh, little critters didn't know what to call shrubs. They called it Steve. Beautiful. But how interesting. Is it in the family of the Aurora? Some scientists say yes, some say no. Uh, it's, it's not as hot. I mean, obviously, the, the, the temperatures are different. So again, what could this be? So there's always something more than what we see. There's always going to be something more in the world and science that we yeah. can't explain. And that's great for the little ones of the world. You know, that, get involved. Uh, that's incredibly fascinating. It is. I mean, it, it kind of looks like... Um a, a beam, like a That's beautiful. like a spotlight beam showcasing the Earth. Yeah, and it doesn't always happen with the auroras. If you'd like to follow this group on Facebook, the Aurora, uh, Alberta Aurora Chasers. Okay. And we thank them for sharing their photographs and, of course, their science with astronomers and other scientists around the world. Well, thank you for teaching us a little bit about science as well. At least I learned a mm, lot listening to you. Something to make you go, hmm. Bounce.